more workers. He kept building them. He got that third base down earlier. He got that fourth base down earlier. He always seemed to have a bigger work account. Even 56 workers killed, QXE still remains in the lead, which is kind of insane. What can I say, though? That was really nicely played there by QXE. Very impressive. Really nice to see mech on mech as well. We don't really get to see that too often. Why don't we go into a 2v2, folks? I have no idea how to cast a 2v2. It's okay. I don't have any idea how to cast anything. So I guess that works. All right. Just getting everybody into the game right now. We will see. Cool. To swap everyone around, actually. We're taking a quick break while we get this sorted out, folks. And then the 2v2 on Greystone Marine. No, not Greystone Marine. Let's, yeah. Greystone Ravine will help us find out who is going to get ahead. Because at this moment, we're currently 1 1 in the Nation War. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I decided not to run any ads because I called it Greystone Marine, which I feel is a terrible mistake and a shame for a display. Ah. Greystone Ravine. I don't know anything about 2v2, so I have no idea how this is going to go down, I've got to say. I don't even know if Gameheart even works on 2v2. I guess we'll find out, won't we? All right. Suppy and Hitman versus Hendralisk and Marsa. The winner of this will propel their team forward. Into a 2-1 lead in this Nation War match. Alright. Well, the answer is not at all <laughs> does game heart work here. <laughs> no, no it doesn't. Alright, oh god, okay. Well, you're going to have to do without the scoreboard, I'm afraid, folks. Game heart was not designed for 2v2 in any way. Jesus. Alright, this, this, this is not a real overlay. Ignore this, this doesn't exist anymore. In your mind, this is non-existent. 2v2, ladies and gentlemen, featuring Complexity Hendralisk and Root Master for Team Canada in the blue and slightly other blue trunks versus their opponents. Sif Hitman. Oh, hang on. This, this is an early pool, isn't it? Ah, six pool coming out from Hendralisk. All right, that's pretty standard 2v2 strat. And EG Suppy for Team America. Do I need to ask Major not to be too racist in chat? <laughs> uh, I have no responsibility for anything that is said in chat. Nothing whatsoever. So just bear that in mind. Early scout right here. Coming out from Master. Six pull coming out from Hendralisk. 
And Master is otherwise doing very little, building his supply depot in his mineral line. Which is an interesting choice, to say the least. Not attempting any kind of wall off. Forge coming down right here for Hitman. Could see some cannons, probably going to see some cannons. Master is actually currently doing absolutely nothing. There we go. Ah, oh, of course he's two Raxing. Should have seen that one coming. There we go. Right underneath Soupy's soup. Soupy? Who the fuck is Soupy? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, catch the catch the biggest money show match in StarCraft 2 history. Can't even get his name right. Sorry, Soupy. Sorry. <laughs> Soupy. Well, this is a problem for Soupy, actually, because he's currently getting his own natural walled off by Master's Barracks, which is an unexpected maneuver. Not quite, perhaps, what you would have thought would happen. Hendralisk goes for the six pool into eight lings, into ten lings, into a queen thingy. Is making his way across. This is not a good position for our little Soupy. Not at all. He's working on the spawning pool. I think he needs... I think he needs spines right now, otherwise horrible things are going to happen to him. I like how Hitman just walled himself in his base and didn't care at all for his comrade right there. Yeah, that's American. Every man for themselves. Screw you, got mine. Ling's in the mineral line. Suppy so manages to get his stuff out, so at least he can try and defend it. The SCVs are coming to gather though, and there's Marines coming in as well. I'd say that Suppy is not in a good place at this stage. He might be able to hold this, but he's probably screaming to his teammate for help, and he's not getting any. Decent surround, gotta say. Not too bad. But there's more Marines coming in. This is gonna be really difficult. These two barracks actually letting everything else in. At this time, there is an attempted cannon rush, which is actually failing miserably because a single lane from Hendralisk found it. And currently, we see little Soupy is on five drones, which is not a very good amount of drones at all. But it's okay, because Team USA still has a Protoss, so I'm sure they'll be fine. Oh, I was talking about failed cannon rush. It actually hasn't failed quite yet, but it is getting there. There's another pylon coming in. A couple of lanes coming out as well. The probe gets surrounded and killed. This is not good for Hitman. This is a bad position to be in. Suppy, however, was able to live with a spine crawler. Didn't live very well, but he lived. Seems like the six-pull strategy is fairly powerful on this map, and on every other 2v2 map. Hitman loses a bunch of buildings for no reason. Suppy with a quick scout. Ah, a tech lab going down on the forward barracks. What an unexpected move, possibly for a marauder, because there might be some stalkers coming out. In fact, if Hitman cared at all about his teammate, he might build a stalker and start to snipe off marines, but that's currently not happening. Soupy's income looks something like this. 220 minerals per minute. That is not a good amount of minerals. Stalker is now on the way out. We are seeing that Marauder, as I said. Pro 2v2 strat. If you're going to build your barracks in front of your 2v2 opponent's natural ramp, make sure that you have a Marauder to deal with the Protoss Stalker that is inevitably going to follow. Just bear that in mind for all of your future. And right now, actually, Master is just going to march up the ramp and probably kill Hitman. And you know what? I have no sympathy for Hitman because he left little Soupy to die. It's not fair. Not reasonable. He is the American healthcare system. He let an innocent man die for no reason. And unsurprisingly, that man is now bankrupt. How appropriate. The nationalized healthcare system of Canada is doing a pretty good job of winning this 2v2, though, I have to say. The chances of Canada are looking fairly healthy in this matchup. Although I have a feeling that, regardless of that, Huck is still a little antisocial. Well, he's walled in to his own base. Not the position you want to be in if all you have are Zerglings. It's okay, though. Don't worry. There's... Oh, never mind. That's from Hendralisk. I was going to say, there's a Baneling Nest coming down. Good luck busting that on five drones, but... Oh, never mind. Subby's actually up to ten. You get to see the barracks covered in creep, which is really nice, but this is also not really helping too much. The Marauders are very slowly killing everything. Probe's coming out of the way. Ling's coming in to try and shut down the Twilight Council. I love how Hitman's like, you know what would be really good in this situation? Dark Shrine. No, not not necessarily. It might be a little late for that. Looks like the barracks are eventually going to be broken. So Suppy is not out of this yet. However, there are Banelings on the way from Hendralisk. So I have a feeling things are about to get really unpleasant really quickly. The remaining probes from Hitman are about to get slaughtered. There are Banelings morphing in the base of Hitman at this stage, which is never what you really want. Queen's going to help out there. Barracks is finally going to go down, which is going to allow those links to make their way through. Could they get the surround? Potentially. Stim is now on the way. If he gets maybe a few more links, he could get a surround kill that off and maybe kill off Stim, which actually might keep him in the game here. Banelings making their way to kill the 
what are they making their way to kill? Oh, they're gonna run face first into the wall. Okay, just checking. I think if Suppy gets a few more links, he actually kills this Terran army here, especially if Hendralis doesn't help. Which, right now, he isn't. Ling's coming out. Hitman is basically dead. He's sitting on a mothership core, which I've been told is a really good unit, but probably not that good. Lings are on their way down here, looking to get the surround. They're already sort of based against the building, however. So I think the Terran army might die here, but the Baneling follow-up is probably going to kill Suppy. So, in fact, that didn't even happen either. Hitman's mothership core is desperately trying to help. You can see it. There's a tiny little executor sitting on top of that big ball in the sky, waving his little arms around, saying, I'm helping, I'm helping! But now it's dead. So that doesn't really do much. And I have a feeling that this is probably going to go to Team Canada. I don't know what's given me that impression. It may be the massive everything disparity. That's Hitman's building shut down. It's okay. He's still got three probes left. He's totally in this. Links come around. Cancel Stim! Suffy! Sick mind game. Cancel... Oh, I mean, I guess you could just kill the barracks. That actually has the same effect, but... He's looking for it. But Ling DPS is really, really low. Suppy's trying to desperately fight his way back in here. The barracks is going to die. Stim has been cancelled successfully. Suppy's still in it. Man, can Suppy carry this? No, because there's a Banshee killing all of his drones. There's the GG. Team Canada. Successful in the 2v2. Which takes us up to 2-1 in this Nation War series right here. Well, that was fun. <laughs> And unexpected. And really strange. Oh my. That was... I, I liked that. Like, I liked... <laughs> uh, I, I probably shouldn't have. But I enjoyed that way more than I had any right to. Oh my. <sighs> so, 2-1 in favour of Team Canada. I'll have to see who's up next. QXC... Currently the only player to put a point on the board here for America. What does that leave us with? I can tell you. We do have, still for Team America, Suppy has not played yet outside the 2v2. Xenocide hasn't played yet, and Minigun hasn't played yet. So, still some pretty powerful players from Team USA. Canada has already fielded Kane, and has already fielded Massa. Kane to great effect, Massa not so much. Leaving Huck, Hendrel, Eskin, Desro, but I have a feeling Desro is actually just not going to show, so that may not be a factor. Now, I do have for you a special guest caster, because, hey, you know, I've been casting solo, which has is, is been great, don't get me wrong, but I thought the most appropriate person that I could bring on for a USA versus Canada team battle would be a British person by the name Ben. <laughs> Hi. Hello, John. Hello, How's it ben. going? How are you? I'm okay. How about you, mate? I'm good. Having a rather slow day, and I saw you were casting alone, and uh, yeah, I thought I'd give you a little message. Yeah, there we go. Give me a little massage as well, if you like, but... I'm really good at those, but uh, really? yeah, you're pretty far away, uh, as far as I can no. All right. Moral support over Skype is going to have to be what happens here. Well, it looks like you're going to get to cast your teammates, because we actually have Suppy versus Huck coming in right here. Oh, really? Wow, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, it is. We're going to have to get you into this game. I'm uh, just logging in right now um sorry i was watching your stream and i had to uh, mute everything and stuff indeed i will i'm gonna put the this is the name of the channel if you can jump in there and i will get you invited and we can have you cast the remainder of this series cool okay i'm, I'm in there i was uh oh i can even join the lobby straight away done there you go look at how good that is look at how that's a very is. inconspicuous channel name by the way yeah yeah i thought it was really well hidden <laughs> This had nothing to do with me. This was all organized by Huck and Suppy, so this is entirely their fault. Oh, really? So they're team captains and they're playing each other? I think so. I think that's the plan. This isn't the ace match, but it might end up being the ace match. 2-1 for Canada? Wow. Okay, yeah. this is a... Canada just won the 2v2. Hendralisk with the... Well, it was actually a really sick strat. It was six I saw pool. the two yes. at the bottom of the ramp and the six pool. And Sneaky. That was dirty. But Hendralisk yeah. is... Uh, he's pretty much the Zerg version of Hitman. But probably less shame, uh, just purely because he's Zerg and he can macro. Whereas, <laughs> you know, Hitman, like Protoss, they're just really good at doing what Hitman does, it seems. I thought you were about to say it was the, Z the Zerg version of Hitler there, but never oh, mind. Oh, no, 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 no. I <laughs> could not <laughs> yeah. say anything along those lines. 
This comment is not endorsed by Evil Geniuses or Alex Garfield Corporation. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd have received a text pretty much like immediately, even before it got streamed uh, by Alex if I did say such a thing. So, I heard uh, he has this kind of minority report pre-crime unit just for esports. He's got like three of these bald-headed people. I think he's got like Caldor in one of them in these little tubs of. I suppose it's amniotic fluid, and they tell him the future. It's wonderful. That's how he knows how to s steal players from other teams. So you immediately, as soon as you said three bold people, the first person that jumped to your head was Kaldor? Well, I mean, let's be honest. Of, I mean, how, totally, how many totally prominent totally. bold people are there in this scene outside of Kaldor? I asked him how he uh, has his head like become so shiny. Like I asked for tips because at one point I was very worried about becoming extremely bold. Wow, is this a big pink square? Or is my StarCraft weird right now? Well, we are, we are on stronger team colors, and Major is getting really confused by that, so... Okay. I, I think okay. that's probably why. Um, everybody on my screen is yellow, like they're both yellow, and uh, I have big pink squares just kind of floating around, but uh, this should be fun. Okay, th th that is not supposed to happen, and that is not on my screen right now, so I'm not 100% sure how to explain that. Okay, I'll send you a... or I'll post a screenshot on a Twitter after this game, I suppose. Indeed. But, um, might Huck be. and Suppy have quite a history, okay. and uh, that history is Suppy does really well in practice against Huck, like phenomenally well, um, but Huck seems to dominate him beyond comprehension in like real games and matches and stuff. Do you think that's because Huck just has more tournament experience? Um, I, I think that's a really big deal. Um, I also wait, is that cannon? Like, is that pylon? Okay, no, it's not blocking. Um, I thought that might be blocking the nexus, but uh, that would yeah, be a little awkward, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's definitely down to tournament experience, but also um, Suppy is known for being one of the most uh, straight-up macro players possible. And if you know that, and if you can take advantage of that, such as, like, uh, Huck definitely can. Um, like, we've all seen Suppy do really well against Korean Protosses, even, like, a parting hero um, in the past, even though it was a while ago. Sure. He's, uh, he's always done very well at it, so Huck, um, yeah, he knows Suppy's weak spot. All right, well, let's see if we can exploit it. Subby's going for the pull first here on about 14, 15 supply. Probably going to see a Nexus come down here from Huck momentarily. Yeah, this is um, this is a pretty good start for Huck, actually. As far as I know in a ZVP, uh, going straight up Nexus against the pool first. They can't really punish it, but also no. you can your forge and cannon up in time. Uh, so just based on build alone, this is pretty good for Huck. But given that it's Fruitland... Um, Maybe something could happen with the lings that are going to be out on the map and the map control that Suppy's going to have. Possibly. It depends as to whether or not Sup or... I've done it again. God damn it. Sup and Hucky. I've been doing this all fucking day. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. I, I called him Soupy earlier. I, I, I heard you call him Soupy, and uh, I immediately oh. looked at Twitter and saw Rotterdam kind of making fun of you. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to keep doing that. Just, I, I, you know, I think you've got to own your mistakes. So I'm thinking uh, Soupy yeah. is going to be a thing from here on in. Yeah, if you can't accept them, then no one will. Absolutely. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Regardless, yes. So, yeah, map control on Fruitland can give you some things. People say, oh, just send the links to kill the lemons. The problem is the lemons have three armor. So they're oh, basically they impossible to kill with links. Wow, okay. And they have like 2.5k health or so too, yeah. right? It takes a while to make your way through those. You can do it. But generally speaking, you want something that hits a little bit heavier if you really want to go for any kind of early-based lemon strat. <laughs> I like how it's a thing, a lemon strat. But um, oh, yeah. one of the cool things for Zerg against Protoss, especially given these builds, Suppy's going to have quite a lot of time before like anything actually comes out of Huck, if anything does come out of Huck. And then, say if something does, Huck has to make the most of that time just to rush to Suppy's base and deal the damage instantly. And say if it is held off, then Suppy is given the upper hand and can, uh, you know, mine as many lemons as he wants, I suppose. But um, right now, I can't really, like, we don't really know what Hook's going to be doing, although he does have 150 gas. Oh, Star, Stalker and uh, Warp Gate are incoming, so okay. nothing too crazy. Let's see how many more gateways come down here from Huck. That's what's going to interest me. We've got another pylon going off to the side right here, so he may decide to put down some more gateways, or that could be for tech. I mean, he's, he does have a decent amount of gas banked up, but he's actually put that into plus one there. Yeah, um, that's really good. Um, so Zealots will be able to two-shot Lings, which is pretty significant. I haven't seen Suppy's ZVP in a while, but I know he likes to rely on Ling sort of play. 
And so this is immediately Huck just being like, okay, I know how Suppy plays, I know that he's very link heavy, and uh, the amount of zealots I'm going to make uh, are going to be able to deal with that, at least deal early game pressure very easily. Suppy lost track of that probe, which is not too good there. There's a stalker working on that queen. There's enough links to deal with that, but in the meantime, a probe managed to sneak down to the bottom there under the potential fourth of Suppy. That could end up being a thorn in his side. There's three more gateways following this up as well. Yeah, um, so it does look like he is going to be piling on a lot of pressure that third, and Suppy's actually putting up a Roach Warren, which uh, it's well-timed. It's there actually we very, very early, too. Um, he's got pretty decent gas count, put both of them down at his natural around the six-minute mark, or at least they're up and running by around the six-minute mark. And uh, yeah, um, what happened to that probe in the bottom right? Got did it get found? Yeah, so oh, wow. Suppy okay. evidently did keep an eye on it. I thought he'd lost it there for a second since that Ling stopped following him, but he obviously registered it in his mind and said, you know what, I'll get it later after I've dealt with this stalker that's trying to just tickle my third. And we see another probe on the right-hand side of the map, and if there's anything that Hook does really well, and you know he does this really well because during Idra and Huck's like prime hating of each other, the one thing that Greg always remarked on that Huck did well was uh, his ability to be super sneaky with probes, which uh, you do see running down there. An Overlord did just die, but he got to see the gases and such. So, um, hmm, I'm not sure what Suppy's gonna, th well, I'm not sure what Suppy thinks is gonna happen. Well, he needs to be prepared for something because level one ground weapons is about to finish. There is a Twilight Council on the way here. The pylon's a little bit too far away, but the second one might potentially be able to work. The problem that I've got with this one is that in order to attack the third, you've got to kind of wander across this big open chasm of creep. From oh, the oh, well. he's getting the lemon, dude. He's getting the... Maybe it was that plus one armor to kill lemons, you know? like a... Yeah, plus one but... weapon will help slightly fa kill the lemon slightly faster. So this is obviously a prepared build here from Hug. Okay, so... <laughs> well, as prepared as it can get on Fruitland, I suppose. Absolutely. Um, oh, he's obsessed with this map. Have you not heard him? Like, he consistently goes oh, on man. about Fruitland ever since he saw it in the map pool for Shoutcraft America. He was the only person not to veto it, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I played it against him, but uh, I managed yeah. to win despite him getting the lemons. But um, here, like, okay, so his third got cancelled. Is he just going to throw down tons of gateways here and just hope for, like, a two-base all-in? Because Suppy just made 19 drones all at once. Suppy is... Very confident right now, it looks like. Yeah, and he kind of has the right to because Huck hasn't actually been able to do anything yet. He got the lemon, which is nice, but that's still... It's 500 minerals. It's not the world's biggest deal. Suppy's trying to get his own lemon, which is taking forever, as you can see with those links, but it looks like the respective lemons will be mined and extra points will be got here. You know what I want to see is a lemon steal, actually, at one point. I want to see the probe carrying the lemon killed off. That would be absolutely <laughs> wonderful. I don't think I've ever seen that. It never happened to GSL, GSTL either. I wonder if you uh, infested, like, if you neural parasite a probe, whether you can deliver those minerals back to your hatchery, because that would be really freaking cool, too. I assume you could. You'd probably have to chain it, wouldn't you? You'd have to have several infestors along the way to chain that up. 500 over, otherwise... minerals, man. Uh, I've, I've done a, a lot less for... Or a lot more for a lot less. Oh, uh, really? Okay, I've got that on record then, Ben. I'm going to use that against you in the future. Oh, jeez. Oh, All right, that is a cancel fourth there from uh, Huck Zealot managing to deal with that. Plus two is about to kick in, as is Blink. So I think we know what's coming next. Um, yeah, and uh, Huck has absolutely phenomenal blink micro, so uh, this is looking kind of scary, but Huck's dealing so much damage to this third of Suffy, and Suffy, he was getting so ready for the next portion of the game that he didn't really... Oh, wait, that's a lot of links. Holy crap. Force fields go down, and they're able to deflect most of that, and Suffy didn't kill the third base. He actually wasn't paying attention, and as a result... The lings were not right-clicked on that base, so that Nexus lives and the third is about to die. I have a feeling Suppy is also about to go out of this game pretty quickly at this stage. Um, yeah, um, like, I don't really... Th oh, muters are on the way, though, so this uh, Mothership call will have to recall or uh, just die. Oh, oh wow, he ran over there. these... Yeah, he got shot by uh, the Spork. In fact, it wasn't a Spork call, but it looked like it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, he Huck's did get out in time. Huck's units here as a result of that, actually, because he had to abandon his entire army, so that means all the Zealots die. I mean, that definitely sucks. Um, but he has, like, he's working it, like, in other places. Like, at the bottom here, 6 o'clock, he's got two Zealots just killing that hatchery. And I mean, that's a great play by Huck. And these Muda's going to the main base right now. It looks like they're going to deal a lot of damage here. 
He's ignoring the third, which is making Xenocider really, really upset right now. Contaminate goes down on the warp gate there as well, just to slow things down a little bit. It more looks cool than anything else. The Meteors are now wheeling around, going for that mineral line. They want to try ooh, and kill the Nexus. Ooh. This is so much damage from the Mutas for uh, the 100 uh, HP, and the bam. Nexus dies. But that's a lot oh. of Mutas you just spent to do that. Yeah, um, I'm not actually sure. Like, what's the um, hotkey to check how many Mutas are lost in game heart? How, like unit loss tab. I, that is actually a really good question, and I have no bloody idea. <laughs> it's oh. not. It's not on my list. The, the units lost. Uh, oh, it's shift L. Yeah, there you go. Shift, shift L. L. Yep, seven oh, mutas wow. died. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a lot for a nexus. And yeah. to be honest, that's not a trade that really uh, Suppy can afford here. I mean, he's got nine mutas running around, but the the difference between nine and like sixteen that's humongous. He can't really put pressure on from this point. Yeah, and Huck's got plenty of Blink Stalkers. His plus three will be finished in about a minute's time, even less if he Chrono Boosts. And at that point, plus three Blink Stalkers against what Suppy's got, that's only going one way. It, it really is. And here we saw Suppy trying to get into that comfortable stage of the game, uh, which we all know he's so good at, which is the late game. But uh, Huck, he, he did what he does best. Um, he read his opponent like a buck and just said, hey, I've got my battle plan right from the get-go. And... Uh, did it and did it smoothly um really really solid play by huck well he was saying earlier that while suppy might be pretty good in practice against huck he doesn't do too well in competitive matches even though this is just a friendly nation war it looks like that applies here as well as plus three a just kicks in there for huck. okay all right all right i'm exaggerating a little bit you know a salty as hell nation war Salty as hell, Total Biscuit. You know if we played against Germany or France, we would not call that friendly in the slightest. No, Even bricks, bricks that... would be thrown, glass would be broken, oh, beers yeah. would be oh. spilled. But this could end pretty early because that's a win for Huck. So this is actually now 3-1 in favor of Canada going into this. It may be that we get a forfeit from Desro, which would take it up to 3-2. But still, this is looking pretty grim for the Canadian team. Uh, sorry, the U.S. team, in fact. It is looking pretty grim. And, uh, I mean, the Canadian roster doesn't even have their, I mean, their number one player on it, right? Like, Scarlet's not playing in this clan war? No. No, she is not. She was a little oh. bit busy, I believe. There's also an ice storm over there right now. So oh. she played her show match today, and I think that's really all she wanted to play, which is understandable. She's been doing nothing but prepping for that. So, no, Scarlet cannot play for Canada, but... As you said, the, their lineup's done really well, honestly. And QXC has been the only American player to actually put a point on the board here with a really good example of TBT against Massa. Yeah, and uh, I must admit that result doesn't surprise me. Um, TBT-wise, um, I can give you like the top three players in TBT quite easily in North America, and Major is probably number one. And then you have QXC and Massa following pretty shortly after. So uh, I sure. knew that match was going to be really close and really cool. By the way, um, I tweeted the photo or the picture of what my Starcraft looks like. You might want to uh, right. indulge. Let's have a look-see. Let's have a gander, shall so, we? So everything on the map was yellow. So it was oh. really hard to tell what was going on. Well, that that is that is not a usual thing. Not at all. No. No, what happened? I This is something I cannot explain. I've never seen this before. It's a big pink boxes. I think Major may have been having the same problem. As I said, everything was yellow. I don't know. Maybe they're Coldplay fans. Oh, man. Oh, nice one. Yeah, see what I did there? Oh. I saw what you did. I saw what you did. Slightly obscure song references. That's pretty much all I've got in terms of my level of humor, I'm afraid. I can't do the analysis, so I just stick to terrible puns and song references. Hey, man, do what you do best. Yes, indeed. It's the only thing I do well. Xenocider versus Hendralisk, I believe, will be the next match. Now, this is a good chance, I think, for USA to get something back on the board. I'd say Hendralisk, as much as I like him, is probably the weaker of the two players in this matchup. So, I think this um, is a good opportunity here. What do you reckon? Zeno's my teammate, and I'll try and remain as unbiased as I can. But Zeno is... Uh... As I said, or as I listed some of the best uh, TVT players, Zeno is definitely one of the best TVZ players. But uh, unfortunately for him, Hendralisk uh, has no shame and can do absolutely anything, which uh, could rock the boat for Zeno Cider in a way that uh, he might not be ready for. And here they're like trolling each other, saying they're going to Turax and stuff. But all Hendralisk does is uh, he's going to go mass Banelings at some point and bust him. Like, that's what's going to happen, I'm pretty sure. Now that is quite the prediction. I'm looking forward to seeing if that is correct. That would be pretty cool if it was. 
I mean, like, you know, when you get it right, it's all good, and, you know, you get a little pat on the back here, but if you, if I get it wrong, then I'm just going to get slaughtered, so, uh, you know, take what I say with a, with a pinch of salt, please. Oh, there's, there's enough salt to go around in this chat, I, I can tell you that for a fact, so don't worry about that.